Are you looking to advance your career? Many employers in the architectural and design field are looking for candidates that have 3D modeling experience. SketchUp Architect has a certification course that will take you at your own pace from beginner to professional. If you'd like some more information about this course, click on the link in the description box below. And don't forget, subscribe to this YouTube channel for more updates. Thanks. So to adjust our environment, I'm going to select the environment icon here. And here we have a couple different options. We have a background color. We have a background centered image, tiled image, a fit image. And here we have some others, sky color, hemispherical, spherical, physical, and sky probe. The one that I like to use is the spherical sky. Now the spherical, spherical sky, what it does is it creates an image that wraps around your entire drawing. So wherever you, wherever you look in your model, it's going to be a slightly different background. So I have a image that I use that I just have it right here on my desktop called Evening Sky. And this is a spherical image. So you would have to find, uh, and you could, look, you could Google this, you can Google spherical images, and you need to find an image that is created for this purpose. So here you have you can see how it's looking, and here I can rotate this image. Let's say if I wanted to rotate it 90 degrees, there you can see it changed because it's kind of rotating along. Let's see if I had it at zero. There you see that as well. So I'm gonna leave it right there for now because I want to create kind of a uh, a dusk time frame for this rendering so I don't want it to be the you know when it's sun or noon time I want it to be more towards the evening time so here we also see the sun strength so I can adjust this value 5 and that would that's more looking like daytime so I want it to be pretty low and let's try 1.5 and let's also, I can also change the brightness of my image. So if I drop this down to 90, there you can see it kind of brought it down just slightly. So here we have a couple other options. We have the sun color, which is this lighting down here. We can actually adjust this. So let's say if we wanted it to be kind of a, a you know, blue tint to it, you can see right there it just created that blue shadow so I'm just gonna leave this though I'm gonna leave it white and so just this kinda could give it a more overall feel let's say if you wanted a more of a summertime look where it's just more of an orange look you can change that there and I I'm pretty happy with these settings so I'm gonna go ahead and close this and right now we are ready to start taking a look at our render. So let's go ahead and open our render dialog box here. And here's our render settings. And the one that I like to use and is the number nine on easy render settings, the render presets, number nine, interior progressive render stop when desired. So with this render setting, you can basically start your render and it will continue to refine as time goes on so depending on your computer processor speed your graphics card this can take a long time or cabin very quickly so you have to be a little patient with it and um, just a good render will take a little bit of time with twilight so what I like to do is for just a preview one way I can speed up my renders is by changing the size of the image that's going to be rendered. So right now by default it's going to be the size of my screen which if you click this it will fit to your view proportion and I want to make this even smaller because I just want to get a preview so I'm going to go I'm going to type in 800 and because it's linked together here it just automatically adjusted the the height as well but I can unlink those and enter the values separately if I wanted to. So I'm going to leave them linked. 
and I'm just going to go ahead and hit render start rendering a new image so let's click here and just give it a few minutes or seconds and we will see what kind of results we are getting so far and if your screen ever just disappears like it just did there don't worry just go ahead and click this button again and it should pick up right where it left off so there you go there we can we're beginning to see what our rendering is looking like and for the most part I am pretty pleased with it but one thing I do notice is I'm not really noticing my up lights so I'm gonna turn up the value on those and I'll go ahead and give it a few more minutes or seconds to, to render so we can kind of get a better look at what's all going on and here I can see my emitter lights are working on my lights my car brake lights there and here we can see our lighting working here and even our interior lighting is is working okay and I may want to change the value of my my recessed lights here just looks a little bit too bright a little bit you know I just want to might want to soften that up so I'm gonna maybe adjust those as well so as, as you can see down here where it's ray tracing this is the percentage that it has completed your rendering and really this will go on and on for days if you allow it so I, re I recommend just doing a quick preview don't ever wait for it to finish because it never really will and it'll just get to a point where you'll be happy with the image and you know you can you can save it at any time by clicking here save a copy of the rendered image and I'll just click that and here it goes it saves it as a JPEG so you can just create a name and save it wherever you want at any time you want and it does not affect your render while it's still going so for now I'm gonna go ahead and stop this render and make the adjustments that I wanted to make you go ahead and minimize that window and I'm gonna adjust the value of my recess lights and to do that I'm just gonna to go to my lighting and select recess lighting and here the power is set to 2.5 let's adjust that to 2 and I'm gonna make it adjust the color a little more and don't want it that red and we'll try that and I also want to adjust my up lights here which another reason why they may not be showing up is they may be getting blocked by some of these other uh, th this plants here so I can go ahead and move these plants forward just in case that's the problem and let's take a look over here you see we have a light there and yeah, just kind of back this these uh, plants up and there it looks fine and one thing we want to make sure of too is that the tip of this is not beneath a uh, beneath our surface if it's beneath the surface it will not shine through so make sure it's above the surface okay so now what I want to do is adjust the value of those up lights and I'm going to select up light and change the value let's try six and I'm going to go to seven actually and I want it to be a little warmer and let's see what that looks like in our model and here I'm just gonna to go to these uh, render scenes that I already created and this is something I go over in our SketchUp Architect Pro Tips course but to create a scene all you have to do is go to uh, view animation add scene and it'll save whatever view you currently have so let's go ahead and go back to our render box dialog box and I'm gonna go ahead and let's do another preview save before starting new render no we don't want to save this this was just a preview and you want to render the current selection only so because I'm have something actually selected in my model it's asking if I just want to render that one object 
And no, I do not. I want to render all my objects. I want to render everything in the scene. So I'm just going to click no. And let's just give that a few minutes to see what it's looking like now. Well, and as we can see here, since I have my camera in a different position, which if I click over here, that's the scene that is rendering. And let's go back to our render. And we are starting to see some of the lighting happening here it's not too noticeable so I can adjust that a little more or I could just give it a little more time too to see just how how much it's showing up there and we can also see my light emitters in my recess lights as well so once I'm happy with all my material settings when I want to create a final image uh, a good high quality image what I want to do is change my value right here so and really is you can make this value really high let's let's say if we went 3000 by well 1445 that will be a pretty good quality image uh, for any purpose and what I'm going to do is go ahead and I'm gonna, actually I'm going to go to another scene Let's try this scene right. Oops, one more. Okay, I'm gonna render this scene. Let's back it up just a little bit more. And just one more tip that we can do is our camera tool, two point perspective, that will straighten our verticals. So whenever, you know, if your view is getting a little bit too skewed, you can just go to two point perspective and it will straighten it all out so every one of these lines is 90 degrees vertically there so it just makes your drawing look a little neater a little nicer so I'm gonna go ahead and render this scene in a high quality and I'm just gonna leave it on that nine and I'm gonna go ahead and hit render no I don't want to current selection I want it to render everything and I'm gonna go ahead and let this run for a little while and give me my final image that I can save. Now when you see it like this, the reason why it's doing that is because the, the pixel size is 3000 by 1445. So what it's doing is just, it's showing you the whole image and if you just want to see it, you can just grab your side sidebars here and just drag them to see your whole model. And we will just continue to let that render. And as you see, as time goes on, as it keeps ray tracing and keeps doing, uh, keeps passing through, it will continue to refine and refine. So usually, I think when it gets to about 10 or 15 is when the image really begins to look pretty good so go ahead and give that some time um, to get the, the image you want and then save it when you're ready and that is pretty much it when you're rendering with Twilight there's you can play with some of these other settings again this is the one that I primarily use and um, I do take this into Photoshop at times to just add a little bit more uh, clarity to it maybe uh, maybe sharpen it um, maybe add just a little bit of a lens flare to some of these lights after it's done so you can use whatever um, photo edit editing software you like um, or you may be completely happy with the image that comes from Twilight it really does a good job for a free plugin 
I think it's a great software. It's a great plugin to have. So if you have any questions, just please contact me. Let me know what you think, what you have thought of this course. I hope you've enjoyed it. I hope you check out some of my other courses. And um, thanks for watching.